Good afternoon and uh, welcome to uh, this presentation. My name is uh, Vianney Kambale uh, from California University in Austria. Uh, the paper I want to present is titled A Box Plot Metadata Configuration Impact on Time Series Forecasting in Transfer Learning. Uh, the paper has been uh, written uh, together with our, uh, our team, um, research team, uh, Ali Deeb, uh, Taha Bernabia, Fadi al and under the supervision of Professor Kamakia. Uh, and uh, um, this is uh, the outline of our presentation. We'll provide a uh, background and motivation. We'll state the problem that we want to, uh, to, to tackle and also define some research questions. So we'll provide a brief review of relevant avenues of metadata using time series forecasting. And then we will explain the approach that we are suggesting about the box plot information configured as metadata for time series forecasting. And then we'll present our experiments and uh, discuss results. And finally, give some concluding uh, remarks. So um, when it comes to time series forecasting, accurate predictions are very crucial, especially uh, to inform decision making and uh, effective planning. And traditionally, time series forecasting ha have been analyzed based on uh, just considering raw data without considering any or associated with metadata. However, currently there is a growing recognition of the potential impact of including metadata uh, uh, on improving the accuracy and reliability of time series forecasting. Um, so uh, when we read uh, through literature, we understand that when we incorporate metadata into forecasting models, it enables us to have a more comprehensive understanding of the underlying data itself, and uh, it enhances the model performance, and also it provides more precise predictions. Um, so on the one side, uh, talking about the bo box plot, we know it from statistics, and it is, it is a tool that is used for visualization, and it helps us understand the distribution of data, uh, but it can further convey more information, more important insight about a given data set. So this work, in this work, we try to explore uh, an encoding of the insight from a box plot, but as metadata for the task of time series forecasting. And the hypothesis that we have it is that the box plot uh, information metadata configuration has an impact on the time series forecasting accuracy, but also on the transfer learning performance. Um, now, this is how we uh, present our problem statement. Uh, we are really keen into investigating and justify the use of metadata in time series forecasting, and uh, especially the potential that it can have by giving contextual information, by improving the model performances. And most importantly, th these are the three questions, research questions that we, we are interested in. First, uh, what are the avenues of the metadata configuration for time series forecasting as we survey li the literature? The second research question, how can information from a box plot be configured and be used as metadata uh, for time series forecasting. And our third research question, what impact does the box, pot, box plot metadata configuration have on time series forecasting accuracy and also on the transfer learning performance? Um, now, a definition of metadata. So metadata is actually a set of data that describe uh, 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 and also gives information about other data, right? So one will say it's data about the data. So in time series, various avenues of metadata have been used to complement uh, the understanding and the analysis of time series data. Some of these include temporal metadata, descriptive metadata, external metadata, statistical metadata, transformation-based metadata. 
And here we're trying to propose box plot information metadata. And if I were to do some sort of comparison of the box plot information, box plots metadata, I will I will say it's close to statistical metadata because it comes the concept comes from statistics, and uh, also close to the transformation-based metadata because uh, we want to use it in the sense of transforming the initial times that we have uh, using the information from the box plot. Now, a quick just uh, a, 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 a reminder of what a box plot is, uh, but before we get to that, uh, I want to mention this, that based on what I said here, that uh, our box plot information based metadata, it's uh, close to the statistical metadata and transformation based metadata because we will we, we try to generate a whole new, we we'll transform the time, series, the time series that we have into a whole new uh, uh, time series. Now, in having that in mind, in our context, we want to define metadata as uh, the pre-processing or the transformation of a given time series uh, uh, that will be resulted in the creation of an entirely new time series. Okay, now with that in mind, let's now try to come now to what to, to, re, to a reminder of what a box plot is. We know that a box plot is a visual representation that illustrates the distribution of numerical data. And it summarizes the data into these five numbers by giving the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and maximum. And we can see it on uh, this figure. Um, okay, and before we carry on further, uh, talking about time series forecasting or how that can be used in time series forecasting, let me try to um, redefine or to define uh, or to give the time series forecasting problem to see how that is defined as a supervised learning task. And um, the way we, for, we formulate time series forecasting problem as a supervised learning using the lag feature, feature approach, this refer to the estimating of some future values of a time series as a function of some past observation. So I uh, have a function of some past observation and then that gives me uh, some future values. Here where n is the number of past data points that we used uh, here from the past, and k will refer to the number of data points that I intend to uh, to predict in the future, all right? So in this case, I would say the lag, lag feature size is, uh, is n, so that's what we can sometimes we refer to it as the window size, and the horizon size, uh, in this case, it is K. So that's how we can formulate the time series forecasting problem as a supervised learning uh, 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 task. Now, how do we uh, now bring the box plots information configured as metadata in the picture? So the box plot information configured as metadata in this work, we want to, as I said, transform the initial uh, uh, time series uh, uh, by converting the lags or the windows of time series uh, and also the horizon into a eight value data chunk, all right? So how is that? Because I said the box plot uh, will give five values. So obviously what we do when we've got those windows, we've broken down time series in windows. Now we uh, find the uh, five values from a box plot. But along with that, we also consider the, this, the first value of the window, the middle value of the window, and the last value of, of, of the window. Hence, every lag, no matter the length, it gets converted into eight, uh, eight value data chunk. So we do that for the, uh, the, the, the lag features and also for the horizon uh, 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 data points. Now, uh, our experiment, how do we set our experiment? Now, the aim of these experiments are actually to try to compare the forecasting performance when we just use uh, the raw data to when we compare the, I mean, sorry, we convert the raw data into uh, a box plot uh, information metadata. 
and uh, we do that comparison is done on just the forecasting accuracy, but also uh, on the transfer learning uh, performance. Um, we are going to use this uh, this metric called EPERF I. Um, I will invite uh, the viewers to consult our previous paper where we give more information about uh, this metric because it has been pro we we propose it to the community. Uh, the EPERF, which is actually uh, calculated as a quad quadratic mean of the RMAC and MAE, but in their uh, uh, normalized format. Uh, and again, when we will discuss the transfer learning, this is a simplified version of also a, um, a framework that we've suggested in our paper uh, titled uh, An Ensemble Transfer Learning uh, for Time Series Forecasting. Uh, but we are now having a, a, a very simplified version uh, for transfer learning where we just consider three scenarios. Okay, these three scenarios actually the source, uh, uh, what happens in the source uh, scenario, what happens in the target scenario, and what happens when we, we do the transfer learning, only three scenarios. And when we calculate the performance of uh, the source of the source uh, domain or source model, we, we, we will call that uh, performance EPERF1. When we will evaluate the, uh, the, the performance of the target domain without a pre-training of that model, we'll call that EPERF5. And when we will calculate the performance of the target model that has gone through some pre-training, we'll call that EPERF2. So, uh, that should be in the pictures because we will, we will use these values shortly. Okay, um, for simplicity, again, we will be using a multi-layer multi -layer perception and because we want to, to see, to do a comparison of raw data versus uh, box plots, metadata, we want to do a mini sensitivity analysis by trying to vary the number of neurons in the multi-layer perception. And what's most important is actually the, the types, the combination that we consider in this, in this study uh, in terms of lag features and horizon combinations. So we consider these, uh, these, um, uh, these, these ones, uh, 9 to 1, 19 to 1, 9 to 9, 19 to 9, 9 to 19, and 19 to 19. Eventually, the aim is to, to uh, make it bigger, but we have to start somewhere. Okay, so in all the three scenarios, the source domain, target domain, transfer learning domain, raw data results are compared to the box plot configured metadata. That's the aim of the experiment. Now, quickly, the result this is what the results are. Um, on the x axis of each and every figure, we have the um, variation, the number of neurons in the hidden layer. And uh, on the x axis, we've got the, the EPERF. Now, um, um, Remember, I indicated three scenarios, source domain, the EPERF with a prefix one, um, target scenario uh, with a model that did not go through the, the pre-training, uh, that has got the unders uh, underscore five, e I mean the EPERF five, I mean the prefix suffix five, and the, re the performance results of the model, the, the, the target model that went through uh, some pre-training, it has got uh, the uh, suffix two. So I just want uh, you to have that in mind as we do the comparison. Okay, so uh, the preliminary result that we have here, we can see, uh, okay, now uh, again, one more thing. If I were to consider this figure here, uh, the um, EPERF1R refers to the performance of the raw data, EPERF1M Refers to the performance of the metadata, so we can we can clearly see how the performance is. It's actually uh, mixing, uh, but here we can see that the the metadata actually uh, uh, performing better. Uh, the error the error is lower. The the curve of the metadata is lower than the curve of the uh, the raw data. Here is actually uh, I think this this is the nine to nineteen uh, because it's the gap is quite wide. Okay, and now the down uh, 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 graphs, it's where we are comparing uh, what happens in the target domain um, with pre-training or without pre-training. And we have got uh, the result as they are 
uh, uh, given here. Now, quickly, let me just, oh, yeah, no, now we've got two sets of results, by the way. Uh, one, we've got uh, the nine to, nine to one, nine to, nine to nine, nine to 19, and so forth, as I, I, I gave them. And uh, here, now the 19 to one, 19 to nine, 19 to 19, and all those combinations as I gave them in uh, the experimental setup. Okay, allow me quickly to, to go to the, straight to the key finding of this, pre this uh, preliminary result. First of all, again, EPERF values in the area performance values, all of them exhibit a downtrend, uh, 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 downtrend uh, as the number of neurons in the hidden layer uh, uh, increases, which means actually uh, with the increase of, of the number of neurons, the error uh, decreases. Now, when it comes to the comparison of the box plot metadata, we see that the box plot metadata consistently outperformed the raw data in both time series uh, forecasting accuracy and also in time in transfer learning performance, except for these two cases in the combination that we consider in this study, except for 91 and 19 to 9 cases. Notably, when the metadata outperforms the raw data in the source domain, we see that that is demonstrated also in the target domain and transfer learning. So it's like there is a correlation when uh, metadata outperform in a, a soft domain, it demonstrates a superior performance also in the target domain and in the transfer learning domain. And comparing the, the, the combined combinations that we considered, it appears that the combination of 19 to nine exhibit the lowest performance, whereas uh, the combination of nine to 19, remember nine to 19 is actually lag features and the horizon size, the nine to 19 achieves the highest performance. Now we were, uh, we were telling ourselves, does it mean that when the uh, horizon size is larger than the, the uh, uh, lag size, we will get much uh, higher performance? Obviously we cannot assert this by just a uh, fewer uh, uh, experiments. We need to do more experiments before we can uh, come up with such uh, a, um, a, a, an assertion. So let me conclude. In this work, we have investigated the impact of metadata configuration on time search, for, uh, time search forecasting, specifically focusing on the using uh, box plots metadata. And uh, clearly the box plot metadata configuration outperformed the use of raw data in the case that we, we considered. And for further work, we think we need to explore outcomes of combination that the combination of lag features and horizon values beyond what is in this, this experiment. We need to do more. And uh, we are suggesting actually a few uh, configurations to consider. We are saying uh, when we fix the lag size and horizon size, how about we, we fix the lag value and we stretch increasing the horizon uh, size? or we fix the horizon size, we keep on changing, increasing, increasing the lag values. Or we, um, we, we take the same uh, lag size and horizon size, but we increase, we increase them together and see uh, what, uh, what uh, information insights we'll get from uh, that. So otherwise, um, still metadata are very useful and uh, informative when it comes to the study of time series forecasting. Thank you very much for your attention.